Three to one here at English Field at Union Park. Liberty on top of their Commonwealth foe, the Virginia Tech Hokies, Bailey Angle and John Laser. Glad to have you with us on ACC Network Extra. Look at that scoreboard out in right field. Those two errors, really the big part of the reason why Liberty is leading this one three to one. One run coming in unearned and another inning of work for Andrew Stout. Yeah, this is the first error of those two, Bailey, that I want to look back on in just a second. Minkin takes inside for ball one. And again, it's not to indict JoJo Otachowski. It's just, I think it's always fascinating to rewind a game and look at it in hindsight and to what transpires after an error. Not necessarily due to what it directly impacts, but you look back to that first error, it would have made it a double play. It was a hot shot. Would have been Taylor made 6-4-3. In the second, would have limited Dylan Hall's pitch count to about half of what it wound up being. And here's the second error. This was the slower roller. The one I'm referring to was the sharper stung error in the second. And not because either was equally impactful, but because it changed the game for Hall in terms of his pitch count. And then it changes the game in terms of everybody else you use from that point forward. Yeah, Dylan Hall ended up finishing the day with 65 pitches as Mankin walks in four straight pitches. So he'll reach for the first time today, and that will bring up the aforementioned JoJo Otachowski. That's the last thing you want to see if you're Scott Jackson in the dugout, your staff of Tarantola and Stout have done a nice job of mitigating this Tech offense to this point, which can get going in a hurry, and the last thing you want to do is give them that first half step in that direction. Otachowski, just the freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, and trying to make his stamp on this season. As we had mentioned earlier on, Nick Owens making a lot more of those starts in the infield as Gallison beckons fourth. Bunt laid down, right up the middle. And the sacrifice intact as Mankin moves to second. Yeah, that's interesting right there. I'd have to go down and ask Kurt Elbin as to whether Otachowski was bunting on his own there. That's a strategy you generally see if you had the pitcher batting in that nine spot rather than a position player, but certainly wouldn't be construed as a bad decision with Otachowski's struggles at the plate that you've alluded to, but a little bit of a surprise with the two-run deficit. Back to the top of the lineup, though. Jack Owens coming towards the plate. He is one for two. He singled to lead off the Hokies' offensive efforts in the bottom of the first and then grounded out to short to lead off the bottom of the third. Well, Stout came in there in the bottom of the fourth after Vinny Tarantola got the start on the mound and then proceeded to retire the side with a couple of flyouts to right. Not kidding about it getting colder, by the way. No. See, my partner's got his black Nike gloves on. That one sliced into right field. Base hit as Warner Doe for it as that one's going to roll all the way to the wall. Mankin will easily score. Owens on his way to third as he slides in. We'll see how they score it. Definitely a single for Owens, but then Rohrer making that big decision to dive for it, and the ball just bounced right over him. Yeah, they're going to have to score this a triple because it was not a physical error here on Rohrer. It is a mental error, though. You mentioned makes the decision to dive, and it is not a defensible decision with a two-run lead, particularly right here. When you realize you're not going to make the play, you've got to pull up on this ball. It makes it the worst-case scenario of the one run scoring and the tying run being at first base, but instead you've allowed the second run across and the tying run 90 feet away with just one out. I know it's a reactionary play in the heat of the moment, but nonetheless, your right fielder knows better than that. Brand new ball game now, three to two the score. So an RBI triple for Jack Owens. And for the Hokies second baseman, that's his second three bagger of the year. And Stoffel rockets one. Does foul and evens the count. Well, the Hokies with some new energy as Jack Owens waits over at third base. Stoffel has contacted the ball well today, flew out to center field and then grounded out to second, but that first tag on the ball he had back in the first inning was a well-hit ball and Artis covered for it. Oh, 
relatively the first big jam for Liberty. Not a huge jam, but first time the Hokies have had a runner over at third base. One is served foul. And you know, you look back at that bunt, and certainly hindsight 2020, but you see what the Hokies did. They just got the line moving. They got to back to the top of the order with Owens, and he rewards that confidence with that base hit. You get to Stoffel, who's going to give you a competitive bat, and is in the middle of doing so right here. And then you got the big boppers in the middle. So certainly understand what Tech strategizing here offensively. And now when you get to a full count on Stoffel, this is a feast position for your two-hitter. So Stoffel looking for his first hit of the ball game. Luke Heransky on deck for the Hokies. Already has a double. They get a little bit more difficult for Stout on the mound. Payoff. Bouncer through the hole into left field. There's a base hit, and the game is tied. Yeah, I can't highlight how impressive a piece of hitting that is from Tom Stoffel. That's a veteran piece of hitting from your senior in the lineup out of that two spot because this is a fastball, but it's to the outer half. And the inclination would be, like I said, you're in a feast type position. You're expecting fastball here to jump out on that front leg and get out in front. But he stays back, keeps the bat in the zone, and just guides it over, giving his team exactly what he needs. Now a mound visit coming up for Liberty. Doesn't really seem to be a change in the works for this Flames team, but the Hokies able to tie it up. Edding started off with a four-pitch walk of Nick Mankin. Odachowski moved him to second on a sacrifice button, and Jack Owens knocked in the center fielder on the triple, and all of a sudden we're tied up thanks to the single from Tom Stoffel and Luke Karansky coming up. Yeah, and it's not that they wouldn't want to make a change necessarily here, but you're right, Bailey, they're not in a position to do so because they haven't gotten the warm-up to the full potential at the moment. You can see just short tossing happening in the bullpen right now for Liberty. That means Stout's got to stay, but rewind all the way to the beginning of the inning. It's not always the case, but when you have a multiple run lead and you issue a walk at the bottom of the order to the eight hitters, again, I mentioned there was the last thing that Scott Jackson wanted to see, and this is why. It's just an igniter and it's unnecessary. You'd like to say, throw strikes, and what's the worst that's going to happen is Nick Menken, who was the man who received that walk, is going to get you for a solo home run and you're still leading. So now the Canadian steps up to the plate, Luke Horansky. A double in the third, he was left on base. That was a man at first with just one out. Ransky starting out his career at Albany, then went to Cisco College down in Texas. Good addition for John Sheff. And a solid player to have in the third spot in the lineup. And as John mentioned, Andrew Stout definitely dealing with the meat of the lineup here for Virginia Tech. Sam Fregale on deck. Stoffel goes. Throw. Sliding in. He's out. Great play by Embry to throw that down to second base. And that changes some things for Virginia Tech. Now two outs. First stolen base attempt of the year for Stoffel. And I think that was a hit run decision for Horansky. And he got the breaking ball didn't want to offer but took the protection off of Stoffel a little bit. I like the confidence that shows in your three hole hitter and arguably one of your best hitters. It just doesn't work out for you in this occasion. So after the help from Embry, Andrew Stout in a little bit more of a confident position. And yeah, we see it after the pitch is delivered here and Stoffel out despite the fact that it wasn't a phenomenal throw from Jonathan Embry. And that's a little bit surprising because it was a breaking ball. But again, it wasn't a ball that Horansky felt like he could do much damage on. So it's a decision to defend your runner or let him on his own. And Stoffel obviously has earned that confidence. Horansky up at a 3-1 count. And actually, that was actually yeah. his ball four. Yeah, they lost track of the count. So did Horansky, and that's just because of all the shenanigans on the stolen base. <laughs> it takes a little while for people to reset sometimes. But yeah, he's walked, so the inning continues. And, and unfortunately, as I mentioned for Liberty, in terms of running into the first out of the inning, the Hokies essentially do that with Stoffel. It's not to question what happened. It's just 
what did happen. And now you've got Fregale, and you might need him to drive the ball rather than just keep it moving for the Hokies. Fregale with a couple of disappointing at-bats in this one. Flew out to center and lined out to end the third inning over to third base. Trying to redeem himself here with the possible go-ahead run on at first. He takes a healthy cut at the first pitch he's seen today from Stout. Yeah, that was not a singles cut there from Sam Fregale. And like I said, with two outs, that's what you want him to do going up there. Do what you do best, Big Sam, and take a swing at it. We'll compete after strike one. Now the breaking pitch just misses as it scrapes in the turf. And the other reason you do that on the first pitch is if you read fastball and you get fastball, if you're Sam Fregale, it might be the only fastball that you get. Andrew Stout showing a pretty decent arsenal so far. It's been a long inning for him. Hokies have already scored two. And Fregale gets himself down in a two-strike count now after that foul ball. Got a fastball, but got a good one. That was well located from Stout. Enticing enough, but not in a drivable place for Fregale. So a ball and two strikes to the Hokies' third baseman. Horansky over at first. Stout trying to end this fifth. Grounder towards the middle. Locklear tosses, and that's it for the fifth inning. Hokies able to tie it up, though, thanks to that big triple from Jack Owens. And now we are tied up 3-3, three to three, headed to the sixth inning here on ACC Network Extra.